So this is going to be the start of chapter six uh, lecture. Uh, and for this one in particular, um, you might want to have some kind of highlighter or um, underline some information. So <clears throat> our focus in this chapter is going to be all about the electron. Okay, um, That is the most important part of the atom for chemists is the electron. So we're going to talk about um, its uh, how it's oriented in the um, atom itself and what we know about it. So during a chemical change, electrons are involved rather than the nucleus. Okay? To study these electrons, we need to hit the electrons with light. So we're going to talk about light here. And the energy absorbed or emitted is then going to be measured. So we have radiation, electromagnetic radiation, and I will mention that here in a minute. Radiation is composed of what we call discrete units called quanta or photons. So a photon is what we call the smallest unit of light, uh, and each radiation is made up of unique photons, unique photons. So what you will see in your notes here, and unfortunately this is not in color, but if you want to write in violet is over on the left and red is on the right. So this is the electromagnetic spectrum. I don't expect you to memorize it or know the wavelength or anything like that, but we are going to kind of talk about a couple different things associated with the electromagnetic spectrum. So let's just do some um, general discussion on it first, and then we'll be a little bit more specific. So draw yourself a standing wave. I am not a professional drawer of the standing wave. I guess if I was a physics teacher, I'd have to do this better. Uh, but um, uh, this is my best attempt at it. So this line is what you call your origin. That's your standing wave. So uh, distance from the origin to the top is called the amplitude. The top of the wave is called a crest. The distance between one crest and the other, so we're talking distance, is wavelength. So the distance between two crests. And then the one that's kind of hard to draw, okay, is me standing on the origin there. That's me smiling. Never happens. Um, I'm holding a timer, and I'm watching the waves go by. Okay, so if I'm watching the waves go by and counting them per period of time, that is what you call your frequency. Okay, so wavelength, the symbol we're going to see is called the lambda frequency. One that most of you don't know is called a nu, N-U. It's a weird looking V. Um, I know in physics you guys use F, I'm going to be fine with it, but um, on the AP stuff, they use the new. I don't know why. They have their reasons. So um, when we are talking about um, wavelength, okay, uh, we are usually, oh, and I'll write this down, lambda. That's a lambda. Most of you pick that up. Uh, wavelength is usually in meters, okay, but we are going to be seeing especially when we're talking about visible light, violet to red, we have something called a nanometer, okay? So this is about 400 nanometers to about 750 nanometers is about the visible range, and you do need to know those numbers. Um, one nanometer is 10 to the negative ninth, excuse me, <clears throat> meter, and one meter is then 10 to the ninth nanometer, okay? So it was one of the um, units I talked about um, beginning of our lecture series um, in terms of units. So we're going to use the nanometer here and then the next uh, chapter we're going to be doing the picometer. So if you flip to the next page, we have an expression. Matter is to atoms as radiation is to photons. So essentially matter, the smallest thing is the atom. Radiation, the smallest thing is the photon. Okay. Um, so, when we are talking about wavelength, that's our lambda, that's our nu. Uh, wavelength is going to be meters, frequency is going to be inverse seconds or a hertz. Uh, abbreviation for hertz is a capital H Z next to it. So, we have a very important equation, which is um, the speed of light is equal to lambda times nu. So, the speed of light is three times 10 to the eighth meters over seconds. Um, again, the number is actually 2.99, something or another. Uh, this will be fine for what we have to deal with. 
Um, so since the um, wavelength is in meters and I'm multiplying it by one over seconds, that is how you get meters over seconds for the speed of light. So you need to know that equation. Um, another little side note um, that I want to mention is something called a wave number. Now the one bad thing about my I can't find a good symbol for this, but wave number is kind of a V, but it has like a line above it. It's the inverse of a um, lambda. So it's the inverse of wave um, length. Um, so it's like an inverse meter. Uh, wave numbers, um, we might see them in a couple different places. So I'm more of just introducing that to you. Um, so if you see that unit, it is somewhat familiar to you. So the second, um, equation. So if we take light, um, there was a scientist called Planck who figured out that there was some relationship to the light and its particular energy. So he came up with what we call Planck's constant, and I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, um, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. So atoms or molecules can absorb or emit only energy in what we call discrete quantities, which is a quantum of energy. So that's what we're building towards is what we call the quantum mechanical model of how we ex think that the atom exists, and more specifically, um, the electron. So this is the equation, a very simple equation, but a very important one. Energy is equal to um, essentially Planck's constant times frequency. So again, you could write this as Planck's constant times F, um, if you like that better. And back up here again, speed of light is equal to lambda times F. Um, again, I'm not gonna get all that crazy about it. So the energy of a photon is going to be in a joule. So if I have my joule seconds for my um, Planck's constant, and I multiply it by our frequency here, I'm essentially gonna be left with a joule. And this last equation here, um, energy is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light over lambda, um, is a way you can essentially combine both together. Because um, if you're finding a frequency or um, wavelength, you are always dividing it into the opposite, okay? So speed of light is always going to be your constant. So you can manipulate these two equations to get to that one, but you don't need to kind of memorize that. So we are going to be talking about um, something called emission spectra, okay? And so to kind of give you a little bit of um, background information on this, um, we have what we call a continuous spectrum. I'm going to show you a picture um, of this as well. So if we take light and we put it through what we call diffraction grading and put it um, essentially, sorry, we take a source of light and we condense it down using a slit and have it go through what we call diffraction grading or a prism, you will get what we call a continuous spectrum. This is the rainbow of colors that we see if we were to take white light, pure white light, and separate it out. So this is called a continuous spectra. So you see all of the bands of color, and I will show you a picture of it in a second. The second picture is what we call a line spectra, or what chemists call an emission spectra. Um, Line spectra is more of a general term um, that you will see in chemistry and also possibly in astronomy because they use it as well. So emission spectra, you're taking a, a gas um, in a tube and you're concentrating it down, putting it through a prism, and you're going to see these lines, okay? So it's called a line spectra because you see a bunch of lines. So this is the spectra of hydrogen gas. So you will see a line at 410, 434, 46 and five, excuse me, 656 nanometers. And these lines are indicative of that particular element. So this is what we call a fingerprint of that element. Um, so it's always going to look the same way um, if it is hydrogen. And this is how um, our, uh, for astronomy, they know far away stars have so much hydrogen and so much helium. It's based on what we call their emission spectrum. They call it an absorption spectrum, but it's the same idea. So I found this on a website. Um, I uh, 
trying to find another website, but this is the best one I could find at this point. Um, so this uh, top portion here is what we call your continuous spectra. So again, violet to red. And then you have sodium, hydrogen, calcium, and mercury underneath it. So these distinct lines are called its line spectra. And again, if you see this spectra um, pop up, you know it has calcium, you know it has mercury, so on and so forth. So the, this is what we call it emission spectra.